So jumping right in, <clears throat> as we know, and as SK said, uh, 4113 has a new title. It's a new standard uh, continuing the same numbering system, ASC 41, uh, but it has a new title, Evaluation and Retrofit. The word rehabilitation, we've swapped that out now to use the simpler and more common term, retrofit. So it covers both evaluation and retrofit design. For evaluation, it replaces the old standard 3103, which itself was a standardized version of a FEMA document called FEMA 310, and before that, FEMA 178. So there's a lot of predecessor documents just on the evaluation side. On the retrofit side, 4113 replaces 4106, which itself, again, was preceded by these various FEMA documents. So there's a lot of history in this document, and sometimes it shows, meaning that there's a lot of baggage that we've been carrying over these many cycles. And as we go through it, we've done a lot of editing for 4113, but there could be more done, and it could be clearer. Uh, we could shorten it. But my point is that there's a lot of information in there, which, uh, though it may seem extraneous, is actually sometimes quite valuable, a lot of commentary, et cetera. So I'll refer you to that for details. The other thing that I think is important to know going in is that this is a standard. It is not a building code. Uh, there are differences, and although the document sometimes has standalone use, it's uh, important to understand how codes and standards relate, especially if you take in my other webinar on uh, existing building codes. You'll, this may seem familiar to you. So the model codes that we generally use in this country are the IBC and IEBC. To most jurisdictions have adopted the new 2012, the current 2012 editions. Uh, these are model codes. They are linked to each other, as I'll describe later. But uh, these are not the building code. The building code is whatever your local jurisdiction adopts. So they may adopt these model codes but with amendments. And then in some jurisdictions, for example, California adopts these codes, but only parts of them. And then East San Francisco goes even further, and Los Angeles and other cities go even further and make their own amendments. So those local adoptions and amendments, that's the building code. The model code is just the basis for it. Now, the model codes themselves refer to various standards, and that's the current philosophy in code development is that the, the code presents the policy and the provisions and the directions of what you have to do and when, but for the how and the, detail, the technical details, the code is more and more relying on standards that it can just reference, uh, that it can just cite as references. So you're probably familiar with ASCE 7, which is uh, deeply uh, embedded into the ideas of 2012 IBC. And frankly, you go to the 2012 IBC for new design, and right away you find yourself opening up ASCE 7. Not quite in that vein, but similar, the 2012 IEBC references ASCE 3103 and 4106. So when it comes to the point where it needs technical details for evaluation and seismic retrofit, it's going to refer to those standards. That's the relationship between the code and the standard. So again, the standard is not a code. And what that means then is that it doesn't have administrative provisions. You're going to find those in the building code. It doesn't have or it shouldn't have policy telling you that here's the cases where you have to use this document. It's just going to tell you once you've figured out from some other source that you need to do a seismic evaluation, here are the criteria to use. So the triggering mechanism and the when and where and why should usually be found in some separate policy. Now, you will find a lot of that policy in 4113. It should be more in commentary. That may change over the next couple of cycles. And the reason it's there is because, again, this document has that long history where it used to be the, only, the standalone thing, and it was really the only document to cover existing buildings. In concept, however, the standard is different from a code because it doesn't have these things. Now, as a standard, it's also more than a guideline. So some of those previous FEMA documents before their standards, those have been understood as guidelines, and they're useful to engineers and practitioners. But when you open up a standard like this, you'll find it's written in code-like language. It's always shall and not should. And uh, you have to do certain things to comply. And it's very clear uh, about what the rules are. That's the standard process, and by having the language that way, it allows the building code to reference it as a standard. So I think the best way to think of this, to think of a standard, uh, is as a very thorough definition. Some idea, some concept is built into a policy, whether it's in the building code or in a piece of legislation that says, hey, we want our buildings to be safe. Then you take the word safe, and you have to define that to the nth degree for engineers, 
That's what the standard does. So the standard is a very thorough definition with industry consensus behind it. That's the way I think it's most useful to think of a standard. So if from that perspective, the question is, why would you ever open up ASC 4113? It depends on the context in which you are working and on which document sent you to 4113. So the context for seismic evaluation and retrofit, what I mean by that is uh, the, the reason for why you're doing the project. And these can be broken down into mandatory, triggered, or voluntary projects. A mandatory seismic evaluation or retrofit is something that is mandated by legislation by a local ordinance or a law of some state law of some sort, regardless of what the owner of the building wants to do. 